Hey everyone, we are back with another Game of Thrones review. Tonight, reviewing Season 5, Episode 7. So, if you are not fully caught up on the show, you're going to want to stop watching this video because we are going to spoil it. Okay, so I basically enjoyed the episode for the most part. I felt it progressed a little slowly, but we got two major payoffs at the end. So I think that made it kind of worth it. I, on the other hand, um, I am completely caught up in the books. And so there is quite a bit of stuff in this episode that really, really ticked me off. And I really did not like this episode at all. I know one of them was Master Eamon. Yes. Because I, I am not fully caught up in the books, but I am to a point where Master Eamon is still alive in the books. I don't know if he dies in the future. But he has a great story with Sam, and it looks like they're not going to do that at all, which yeah. is disappointing because I actually did really like that. In the yeah, books. that's a that's a great story that j they just stole from Master Eamon, and they didn't replace it with anything. They just took it away from him, and that really upset me. The other thing is that it almost seems to me, not, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it almost seems to me as if they're making Sam and Gilly going to run off together. And if they do that... I will be so beyond mad. That you would have be no idea. Way out of character yeah, for Sam. Sam would never leave. The I don't think he watch. would break his vow to no, the Night's Watch. No, no. And I really wanted him to go and have that adventure to become a maester. So if they don't do that, I'm going to be really, really disappointed because I think that was important for his character. In last week's episode, Bronn, in, in his fight with the, the Sand Snakes, got cut on the arm, and you know. Dornish warriors, they poison their blades. They're kind of known for that, you know. So I kind of figured, I was like, all right, is Bronn going to die here soon because I know that blade's poison? And it turns out, yeah, it was poisoned, but he doesn't die because <laughs> boobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was just kind of a... Uh, it was a little gratuitous. And she, like, gave up the antidote very easily. And yeah. It just... It just felt weird. It was kind of a tell me I'm pretty and I'll give you the antidote. Yeah. And I don't know, that didn't seem, well, I don't know that much about the sand snakes, but that didn't seem like something a Dornish would, woman. A Dornish woman would do. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm glad Bronn's alive. Yeah. I think I think that scene was probably the weakest scene in the episode, though. Yeah. Jon Snow is on his way beyond the wall. I kind of figured this episode would pick up with him already on that trip, but the uh, picks up instead with him preparing. So I, I feel like his story should have progressed a little bit farther than it has so far this season. Yeah. I thought this episode would pick up with him already on the trip and, you know, almost to the Wildlings to have their little meetup, which it looks like we'll get that next week. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it does look like next week's going to be pretty heavy Jon Snow and he's going to be yeah. there. So that's, that's good. At least we're going to get yeah. his story. <laughs> and uh, Lady Elena, I got to tell you, it seems like they've kind of... I don't know if weakened is necessarily the, the, the best word for it, but last season she was such a powerful character and she was always, you know, two or three steps ahead of everybody. But this episode, and then last episode, it seemed like she's not really on top of her game. This was actually one of the bits that I did like. They're doing a good job of King's Landing. I, I, it, the story has changed, it's not the same as the book, but nothing's for the worse. And everything does seem to be happening, they're not cutting out extremely important parts. Uh, like, I'm already pretty sure I know what the season finale is going to be. I, I'm, like, 99.9% .9 sure um, with certain elements, like, I think I know. And I'm really happy with how that's going. And I just, I kind of like that um, the grandmother is all high and mighty and is kind of kicked down a peg because she's kind of been able to do whatever the hell she wants. Yeah. And now she, she she's powerless. She, she can't do anything. orchestrated the murder of the king. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and yet she can't get her grandchildren so, out of jail. So I feel, I feel like she probably felt a little untouchable. And now, like you said, she's getting knocked down a little bit, which is probably good for, for developing her character. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is an exciting development for her character. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, I, this is one of the parts where I was like, yes, the story's good. <laughs> They're not messing it up. <laughs> and speaking of getting knocked down a peg, holy Circe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting for this this whole season because I knew it was coming. And I'm like, when she get arrested? When she get arrested? When she get arrested? <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so, um, Littlefinger and Lady Elena, they get together. And Littlefinger's like, hey, you know, I've got the dirt on Circe. So, we, we yeah. can... They, well, they don't actually 
we're not really privy to what he tells her, but, but you know, you wait, know wait. that little Littlefinger is the reason that Cersei is now in jail. Yeah. That her and Lady Elaine is Well, he, are... he knows that Cersei and Lancel yeah, had, yeah. had well, an affair and is the wrong And he probably word, but... convinced Lancel, hey, you need to uh, step up and confess this. You're Otherwise, you're, yeah, a you're, yeah, blah, you're a hypocrite. Yeah, I'm sure he he's very good with words and convincing people. Yeah. So, yeah, you know those two had something to do with Cersei, yeah, and it's just, oh, it's fabulous. <laughs> so Cersei got, Cersei got thrown in the lockdown. Yes, and, uh, yes. I'm looking forward to seeing how that story progresses because she is not going to do well in jail. No, I know. I, this is so exciting. This is, like I said, this is like the only part of the episode I was just and, and very And the, the fact that, that her arrest directly followed her kind of, totally just... Her kind of being a bitch. Well, she, she went to, so first of all, she lied to Tom and was like, don't worry, you know, mommy will fix everything. And then she goes and visits Marjorie, and she's like, ha, 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 Yeah, she, like, rubs it in her face, yeah. like, you're in jail. And, nah, then, nah, 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 nah. and then she gets popped. And so, oh. yeah, that was probably my favorite scene of the episode, was yeah. Cer Cersei, uh, you know, tell her to unhand me. And they're like, no. And we pick back up with Sansa, and it's very evident that Ramsay is just brutalizing her yeah. every night. And I just, I don't know, um, I, I'm... I'm really not okay with how they're doing Sansa's story. Uh, they keep building her up to be this strong person, and then they just knock her right back down to damsel in distress. And it's just up and down, up and down. And I'm like, oh, I just, I just don't care about her character anymore because of it. And we catch up with Stannis Baratheon, and he is not yet at Winterfell, but no. he's, and he's, they're kind of stuck in the snow, and they're, they're freezing their asses off. <laughs> Yeah, things and, aren't looking very good. And Sir Sir Davos is trying to talk him into going back to the wall and waiting out until the snow clears. And he's like, dude, if, if we go back to the wall now, we're there for the winter, and who knows how long that's going to yeah. last. Yeah, and he said, and we turned away from King's Landing, so now I'll be the king who retreats. Yeah. He, he doesn't want to tarnish his reputation. So, Melisandre, the Red Lady, she, you know reminds Stannis how powerful the blood of the king is and that he needs to make a sacrifice and she tries to talk him into killing his daughter. Yes. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, the Stannis I know would have had her head on a spike like the next day. Yeah. He might be cold, but he loves his daughter. I mean, when she got the grayscale, he went far and wide to bring healers in to get her healed. There's no way he's sacrificing her on yeah. a fire. And if they do that, oh, that's another one. Oh, I'll be so mad. <laughs> I, I don't see Stannis doing that. No. I just because they made such a big deal about his devotion to his daughter, and I yeah. I don't know what her story is uh, farther in the books, but it's not this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I'll, I'll be really sad because I like her as a character. Yeah, me too. And I do really like her. I think she's sweet. I don't really care for Stannis, so yeah. kill him off. I'm fine. <laughs> you just roast him, and then she can lead the army. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like Melisandre either. I'm waiting for her to die. But the other big payoff we got is Ser Jorah and Tyrion finally connected, kind of, with Daenerys. At, uh, it was kind of the, the pre-season of the, the fighting. Yeah, it was like, the, like the, the, the fighters fight to figure out who's the best of the best, and then those are the ones who go and actually fight in the ring. And she is convinced by her fiancé to go and watch, even though yeah. she doesn't want to. And, um... She's disgusted watching yeah, this. Yeah, she, like, she's, she's so disgusted. She's, she's like, this is terrible. What did I sign up for? Yeah, she, she, I, you can tell that she's just she's regretting her decision to reopen the fighting rings. But Sir Jorah sees that she's out there, so he joins the fray and cleans house. Yeah, cleans everybody up. Yeah. Um, and then after he finishes, Tyrion's like, oh my god, I gotta get out there too. And, uh, you know, they, they reunite. And... That was good. Um, I am a little disappointed because, um, like, up until this episode, I was okay with how they were changing Tyrion and Ser Jorah's story. Uh, but this episode here, they cut out a big chunk, and maybe, you know, they, they want to progress the story, although Daenerys always needs more story, so I don't know why they would cut out stuff. Um, but there is a major scene later that I don't think is going to happen now. And that's really disappointing because it was really, really awesome. And it was with Tyrion. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that somehow they get about to doing that scene. I don't know. I don't think they're going to. I think he, he gets out of it. But 
Maybe they'll do something else and make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. If you've read the books or if you're, and you're all the way through the books, you probably know what she's talking about. I really don't. <laughs> so she's been really great about not spoiling things for the yeah. books for me. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> I think that's it for this video. If we missed anything, let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, if you've seen this episode, let us know what you thought. Um, are you with him and basically okay with the episode, or are you with me and completely disgusted by the episode? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be an interesting conversation. I'll let you, I'll let you reply to those comments. <laughs> um... Now, Saturdays we do our Topic of the Week video, so we are always looking for topics for that. Basically, just give us a suggestion, something that floats your geeky boat. It doesn't have to be related to Game of Thrones or Walking Dead or any video we've ever done. Just something for us to talk about on Saturdays. What we'll do is we'll look through all the suggestions, pick the one that we think we can make the best video from, and then that's the one we'll do. And thank you very much for watching, and we will see you guys next time.